Hello everyone, my name is Justin Kwan, and today I'll be presenting our work on extending and bending robotic limbs. They use a novel tape spring mechanism for both mobility and manipulation tasks. This presentation will cover our preliminary investigations on our newest system, EMA, the Elastic Extending Mechanism for Mobility and Manipulation. This proof-of-concept prototype is primarily a climbing robot that can scale ladders and shelves by extending its gripper up to half a meter away. The limb can also initiate shape morphing to bend over obstacles. These two simple functions can be combined to accomplish a wide variety of tasks. For example, this long bendable arm could be used to deploy anchors to climb and swing through difficult terrain, or to place cameras or grippers in hard to reach places for tasks like sample retrieval and inspection. So let's talk more about the motivation. Why is this useful? Why might we want a highly extendable, bendable robotic limb? Well, there are many environments that are currently difficult for mobile robots to traverse, such as cave systems and forest canopies. These have highly irregular features in all directions like vines, branches, cliffs, and stalagmites. This can make it difficult to safely navigate for wheeled or flying vehicles. So what if we chose to climb instead? Interestingly, spider monkeys have evolved a unique solution to this problem. They climb using their long legs and tails to grapple onto multiple points in space. This allows them to move safely while establishing new anchor points. However, this movement scheme is limited by the length of their limbs. If there are no safe anchor points within reach, they have to jump, which is a risky maneuver. So let's imagine a climbing robot that grapples onto points just like the spider monkeys, with its body here and some limbs. How might we be able to increase our reach? Well, for establishing distant anchors, we can look at fishing hooks and grappling hooks for inspiration. These involve launching a hook far away and reeling it in with the spooled material to retrieve fish or ascend buildings. But while these spooled devices grant a very long reach in a compact package, a major downside of these methods is the lack of precision. Since the hooks are attached to an amorphous string, it's difficult to control exactly where the hook will land. We can remedy this by incorporating a spooled material that does hold its shape, like the common tape measure. These steel tapes have a curved surface and spring properties that give them directional stiffness. Folding the tape also gives it different mechanical properties where the cross-section is forced to flatten out. This offers certain advantages that we will utilize later. Combining these ideas, the flexible EMA limb presented here is our first step towards achieving a versatile system like this that can climb through difficult environments and manipulate targets from far away. Now, let's briefly go over some of the existing technologies that EMA is based on and what we can learn from them. Let's first take a look at legged climbing robots. Systems such as Acrobot and Rise use steel microspines to stick to rough surfaces and climb using a bio-inspired gait. NASA's lemur takes it one step further, adding multiple degrees of freedom. These limbs offer adaptability to surface variations. Another climbing strategy is using wheeled climbers, such as this rotary microspine wheel array and this swarm robot with two suction anchors that suspend the main body. These have reduced weight since they don't need to generate a gait, but they're limited to climbing flat surfaces. So what can we learn from these projects? Well, since climbing robots must be able to support their own weight while navigating terrain, it's preferred to have a smaller, low-weight system, especially if it's just for inspection or surveillance tasks. Additionally, all these robots have built-in redundancy with extra limbs and acres, so if one of the grippers falls, the whole robot doesn't fall. Finally, since natural environments and human environments can be so widely varied, adaptability to different terrains can be valuable, since a preferred gripping point may not necessarily be a perfectly flat wall. However, adaptability comes at the cost of complexity. From these examples, we can see how an extendable arm could greatly enhance climbing mobility. This would allow planning steps to be much faster, since the grappling hook only needs to aim, extend, and reel into points instead of slowly coordinating four limbs with multiple degrees of freedom. The extension would also greatly increase the effective range of the system for grappling points. So now let's look at some long-reach deployable mechanisms that might allow us to make an extendable arm. First is the zipper mast for rovers, which can deploy up to 12 meters. The mast is made of three spools of flat metal tape that connect to form a sturdy column. Next are a class of deployable mechanisms for space applications that use curved tape springs, just like the common measuring tape. In this deployable boom for CubeSats, two curved tape springs are mounted facing away from each other. The opposing curvature grants its stiffness in multiple directions. Finally, an interesting application of tape springs is this pinched tape manipulator arm for UAVs, which is designed to reach targets far below during flight. It has a pinching node that travels up and down the tape to bend the arm up to 55 degrees. These long-reach mechanisms demonstrate that spooled materials can be very effective for a compact long-reach system. They also show that tape springs are strongest when loaded in tension, but mounting them in pairs allows them to handle compressive loads. 
Finally, the tape's built-in spring properties and compliance can be utilized for additional functions. Combining this knowledge with some other inspirations, we developed the Emo one prototype. This compact, lightweight, extendable limb utilizes a novel climbing strategy of deploying hooks and anchoring in sequence to scale shelves and ladders. So a quick overview of the mechanical design. We first have the tape spring limb, which is composed of a single continuous piece of curved steel tape. The tape is half inch wide and extends up to half a meter. Next, the main body contains the spool, tension management system, motors, and electronics. Finally, there are two sets of hooks at the end effector and the main body that allows it to attach and detach from consecutive levels. The system is fairly light at 0.68 kilograms, but this is reduced to 0.5 kilograms when excluding extra fasteners that were added for adjustability. The compact body measures 13 by 14 by 10 centimeters, and at top speed, the system can ascend up to 19 centimeters a second or about 1.5 body lengths per second. This matches that of the fastest wall climbing robots. The limb can also bend up to 100 degrees. Looking at the tape spring in more detail, we can see that it's a single continuous U-shaped piece, with the left end fixed and the right end attached to a motorized spool. Located in the midpoint of the tape is the end effector, which contains an idler pulley that's placed into the U-shaped fold. Rotating the spool causes the tape to extend or retract, and the idler passively rolls along the length of the tape inside the fold. These black dots represent fixed marks along the tape so you can better visualize its movement. The idler also functions as a compound pulley, offering mechanical advantage when lifting the main body. Bending the tape into this U-shape means that the left and right tape segments now have curvatures that face in opposite directions, essentially serving as a mounted pair. This gives the limb rigidity in multiple directions, and loads are shared between the two segments. To initiate bending, EMA1 uses a form of mechanical multiplexing to switch between extension mode and bending mode. The end effector has a braking function that locks the idler pulley with a small screw-driven mechanism. The end effector now functions as a fixed point and is unable to rotate. This essentially separates the tape into two segments, which changes the kinematics of the system, with the left length fixed and the right length changing as the spool is rotated. As the difference in lengths increases, moments are generated at both ends of the tape segments. This causes folds to be induced, and the entire limb begins to bend. By switching between extension and bending mode, the end effector can essentially be controlled with two degrees of freedom, although it can't control both degrees of freedom at once. Because of the tape's spring properties, the bend can easily be undone by returning the right tape segment to its original length. Emo one's compliant hooks are the final major component that makes climbing possible with only one degree of freedom extension. Here, we see the attachment sequence for the hooks, which have two flexible prongs. The prongs deform as they pass the ladder rung and spring back into place once they're above it. When the tape retracts, the hooks land on the rung, allowing the main body to ascend. Another set of hooks on the main body operate in the same manner to allow successive levels to be climbed. In this shelf climbing demonstration, the limb extends vertically, attaching its hooked end effector onto the next level. Once anchored, it reels itself in. This footage is not sped up, though the robot is going slowly to minimize the risk of a fall. All climbing trials were done with simple open loop control and manual inputs, and the system does not require sensors to climb. As it reaches the next level, a second set of hooks on the main body allow a new base anchor point to be established, and the sequence is repeated to scale the whole structure. Next, we tested climbing on vertical ladders, which are common in industrial environments. These were successful despite the larger ladder rung size. We also conducted wall climbing trials on rough vertical walls by replacing the end effector hooks with a microspine array. The system could successfully cling to the wall and ascend small distances but the end effector was prone to twisting off of the surface due to the placement of the main body center of mass and the small size of the microspine array. These issues can be alleviated in a future redesign. In this bending demonstration, the limb is commanded to extend to point A, then bend to point B. After extending, the brake function is activated, entering bending mode. When the moment applied to both ends of the tape reaches a critical value, a coherent fold is induced in the center of the limb, allowing it to bend to point B. This bending action showcases the limb's two controllable degrees of freedom using only a single main motor for the spool. Here, the bending feature is used on a staircase to place a microspine anchor on the top surface of a step. The tape spring properties help passively maintain the microspine's orientations so they can properly engage with the surface, even after a failed anchoring attempt. Here, you see the microspines pulling in the main body, which shows that they have engaged successfully.
We also observe that the limb exhibits discontinuous nonlinear behavior while bending, with three distinct states of operation. For small angular displacements, the limb is in the first state and seemingly behaves like a flexible beam with linear displacement delta. When the bending angle theta exceeds 10 degrees, the left segment buckles and a fold is generated at the midpoint, assuming the applied moments at both ends are equal and opposite. Meanwhile, the right segment begins to experience combined twisting and bending. For angles larger than 40 degrees, the right segment also buckles, and the limb operates as if it has a virtual revolute joint at the midpoint between the folds. From these observations, the limb's forward kinematics were derived for this third state of operation, for a vertically deployed limb and with a virtual revolute joint. Here, input Q of T is the length of the extended tape after the brake is engaged. This can only describe either extending or bending, and does not take into account external forces or torque such as gravity. We then took the simplified model and compared it to actual end effector positions when bending with an initial extended length of 14 cm and 27 cm to observe differences in behavior when bending at smaller and larger scales. Position data was captured using a camera and tracking markers attached to the end effector. For multiple trials, these graphs show the average trend lines for the measured data as dotted lines with solid lines showing the model's prediction. The simplified model appears to track well from angular displacements between 0 and 70, only deviating up to 3%. Beyond this point, the tape's sudden transition into a fully folded state causes the fold to migrate slightly. The end effector travels along a different path than expected since the pivot point is no longer at the midpoint of the limb. In addition, gravity causes the end effector to sag slightly below the expected position at all times. In ongoing work, we are forming a more complete model of the limb's bending behavior. This includes using numerical or an analytical methods to characterize the large initial deflection and integrating other theories to characterize its folded bending stiffness and rotation properties. Further investigation found that the fold location could actually be changed based on dynamic inputs. When the spool was retracted slowly and evenly, the fold always occurred at the midpoint. However, retracting in short bursts caused the fold to be generated elsewhere. This likely has to do with timing between the spool retraction and the end effector's oscillation but this will need to be explored in a future work. During trials, we also found that the limb could be oriented to produce 3D folds, using gravity for controlled out-of-plane displacement. After folding, the limb's natural elasticity makes it easier to return to the unfolded configuration. We also conducted other tests to explore possible routes for future functionality. A standing test was performed as demonstration of the limb's ability to serve as an extendable prismatic leg. The limb was extended, and the main body was released, with its weight creative a compressive load on the limb. The limb could be extended up to 20 centimeters before the body could no longer balance. This can likely be extended greatly for a future system with multiple legs. We also tested a crawling action by attaching passive wheels to the main body, and using the limb to pull itself across the floor using the microspine attachment. This demonstrates the possibility for EMA to be used in combination with other mobility schemes for different effects. This could be very useful, for example, if a rover lost power to its wheels, but could still operate using its EMA manipulator arm. So some interesting findings from these demos. From the climbing trials, we found that the spring properties of the tape provide several benefits. Its natural elasticity provides passive correctional forces and counteract perturbations. This is great because the hooks require directional engagement and must approach grappling features at a specific orientation to be effective, especially for microspines. The self-correcting makes climbing sequences robust and easy to control, as it passively aligns itself to certain surfaces. It's also safe, as the limb will simply deform if it misses a target or encounters an obstacle, and it won't damage itself or its environment. Second, the limb supports loads and tension very well, but can also support unexpectedly high compressive loads. This means that it can be used to push objects in its environment and is not limited to only pulling forces. Finally, oscillatory behavior was noted for nearly all trials, especially at longer extension lengths and when extra mass was added to the end effector. We found that this could be counteracted by retracting the spool with a specific timing that cancels the oscillation, but this may still cause problems for future designs with even longer reach. Moving forward, we aim to further develop the mathematical model, integrating more concepts from mechanics of structures and study specialized cases like thin shell deformation and large deflection beam deformation. We also want to account for the effects of external forces and out-of-plane forces on bending behavior. Second, we want to investigate the dynamic effects, including using timed inputs for canceling oscillations and controlling the location where the fold is generated. Alternatively, an existing fold may be moved or split using impulse moment interactions that have been previously studied in other literature. Finally, 
The EMA1 prototype demonstrates the versatility of just a single EMA limb. Future mobile robots could utilize combinations of EMA limb configurations, such as this three-armed grappling hook robot that can suspend itself in forest trees and retrieve samples from below. Or, a four-legged robot that can extend its legs to walk over obstacles or traverse muddy swamps. In harsh environments like these, redundant limbs that can serve for either mobility or manipulation tasks can be valuable in the event of limb failure. The principles explored in EMA could also be used for a closed-loop tank tread that can morph its shape, or serve as fingers for a compliant gripper or arm. The tape steel construction could be favorable for conforming to sharp objects, unlike typical soft robot grippers. This isn't it for possibilities, though. With EMA limbs, there are many exciting routes for mobile robots to explore in the future. And with that, I thank you for joining me on this presentation. Once again, this has been Justin Kwan from Romella, and I'm excited to see what we'll have to show you next.